Okay, we are live and good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Lauren Gates. I'm the host of our Airway Health so uh, Solutions Conversation Series. I am so thrilled to have Dr. Felix Liao. Welcome, Dr. Liao, and thank you for being here. Um, oh. You're our special guest tonight, and we'll be discussing timely and life improving strategies from his new book, which I cannot wait to be released, uh, Licensed to Thrive, a Mouth Owner's GPS to Vibrant Health and Innate Immunity. So welcome, Dr. Liao. Love to join you. This Thank is such you. a uh, pleasure, yes, loving it. So tell us a little bit, first of all, um, how, how did you come up with this title? Uh, everyone knows your work from I, the, probably the most famous book that I recommend to every single one of my patients is, you know, Six Foot Tiger, Three Foot Cage. And then you had Early Sirens. So tell us a little bit about the progression and what we can expect from License to Thrive as an overview. Sure. Um, so. License to Thrive um, uh, had its origin in a 007 movie, License to Kill. Ah. So, um, I looked at the leading causes of death in the U.S. And it's all mouth related, right? If it's not heart disease, it's cancer, and then it's COPD, then it's diabetes, then it's obesity, then it's Alzheimer's. And now COVID, right? What is that? Hand to mouth and to mouth, and to mouth. And so either it's wrong, one wrong mouthful at a time, which has to do with usage, or um, degeneration from oxygen starvation by nightly installments, right? So this is what I call equipment. So if life is a road trip, over your lifespan, then your mouth is like that car with a driver in it, okay? So there's the equipment and there's your driving style. Some people are cautious drivers, some people are reckless drivers. Some people are informed drivers, some people are, and the bigger the risk, the bigger the thrill kind of driver, right? Right, so, that's true. So that applies to what I call mouth style, how you use your mouth, to enjoy life or destroy yourself as the case may be, right? So license to thrive is the opposite of license to kill, right? License to thrive is about, okay, how do we use our mouth in a way and how do we reconfigure our mouth in such a way that it allows the body to thrive? So I see you. What do you get if you get admitted to ICU? Ventilator, right? So what is that? Breathing. Well, we can help people sleep in their own bed and breathe better with our own devices, right? Yes, absolutely. I, go to I, ICU. Love, I love, you know, it's so funny. There are so many quotes from your book and I had the pleasure of, of reading the manuscript. I know it's not published yet. So this is kind of a pre-published party, if you would. But um, I can't wait for this to be uh, to be released because it's if everyone followed your principles, it would be like heaven on earth here. You know, yeah. <laughs> what a great punchline that is. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, that's true. That is very, very true. And so um, one of the one of the um, premises that, you know, you have to have good equipment to enjoy the road trip. All right through life and the other one is you have to have a sensible operator style right you cannot take undue risk you cannot make overly risky moves all right so this is the first book that i know of that combines oral appliance therapy airway digestion and alignment together with a bone building nutrition so now, when you say oral appliance therapy, I know that's not like the typical oral appliance therapy, um, but that perhaps people are thinking you may be referring to. Or can you kind of touch upon what your version of oral appliance therapy sure, entails? Sure. <laughs> all right. So first of all, it's maxilla based. Okay. So we're past the we're past this argument that okay, 
you know, mandibular advancement uh, is the center of the universe. All right, the Earth is round now. Okay, so as we can see mandibular... behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just point to the madness. Yeah, so the Earth is round now, and so maxilla actually dictates the mandible. All right, so if you're not um, seriously looking at maxilla as a etiological source of what I call impaired mouth syndrome, mm -hmm. okay? So impaired mouth syndrome is what happens to the body when your mouth structure is uh, deficient or poorly developed, all right? So we know what polio does to people, right? Uh, you got this bum knee and your whole body wobbles. What happens when the jaws are developed in such a way that the rest of the body has to compensate for it? Mm -hmm. All right, so if you have a, let's not say polio, let's say you have a sharp stone in your shoe, in your boot that you can't take off. You end up walking funny and pretty soon you have low back pain or neck pain, right? right. Well, what happens when that sharp stone or thorn is in your mouth? Mm. The same thing happens to the rest of the body, okay? And this is what impaired mouth syndrome is. So what are the oral structural contributions in the form of impaired mouth to the rest of the body? So what are impaired mouths like? How about crowded lower front teeth? How many of those do we see in a day that just kind of go right out the door undiscussed, right? right? What does that do to their airway, to their TMJ, to their neck and shoulder and back pain? I know when I was in, in, in general and biological dentistry, right, uh, the patient comes in and say, oh, you know, please adjust my uh, headrest uh, carefully. And can I put a roll under my neck? And like, you know, my assistant will roll her eye and I would say, well, that's your chiropractor's issue, right? Well, not anymore mm -hmm. because now we know better. The earth is round and uh, there is a major, major oral contribution to cervical and back pain. How do I know? Because my patients taught me. All right. So we, all we do is, I mean, every day I put something in between the patient's um, axillary and mandibular anterior teeth just to free them up from their habitual malocclusion. And I told them to take a walk and they all say, oh my God, I feel like a new person. Mm -hmm. I feel smoother, I'm less of a drunken sailor. I've been told that I can't walk straight all my life, right? So nobody's ever looked at the mouth as a, as a source of pain. I mean, not toothache, but I mean postural pain. Nobody's really seriously considered dentists as serious doctors. Because you guys just work on teeth. They're great teeth carpenters and great at you know making smiles. But back pain? No way, right? Well, what about internal medicine? We know that from experience, again, my patients taught me these things. I had a patient who's been a year and a half now without having to use her asthma medication. It's right. miraculous in a sense, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you do not believe it. And this is over 30 years of relying on her ventilator, going, not going any place without it. So yeah. I know we're both really excited to, to talk about all these topics. You have 25 chapters and we could literally spend 25 hours <laughs> doing this. So, um, Dr. Schuster, but Dr. I do, Schuster calling. I'm calling her, you. Oh, someone's so I'm calling you before your big day comes. <sighs> Hold on, someone has to be on mute. Hey, listen, when you, when you go in to uh, see Dr. Budak, <laughs> I left a message that um, just make it. sure you... You're on, right. you're on mute. Hold on. Let me just... I can't okay. find it. Anyways, Dr. I left a message. You just need to mute that, yourself. That remember when I talked to you before about Marin? I said well, I might need to see her for a scan oh, just because we're going to put like a little retainer on the top. Hold on. And just make sure you schedule. Dr. Her. There we go. I could find him. I couldn't find him. We have a, we have a lot of attendees tonight. We had uh, close to 200 registrants, Ooh. and I I believe wow. that um, 43 wow. are with us, and we have some on Facebook. So welcome. You can um, please leave your 
questions in the chat, but what I wanted to say was we didn't start off with a formal introduction uh, just because we both were so excited to get uh, talking about this topic that we're both so passionate about, but can you just rewind a little bit and tell us how you got into this holistic concept of how you got to become airway-centered mouth doctor, because you certainly didn't learn this in school. Am I correct? Absolutely. You know, dental school, dental school's principal focus to turn us into good two doctors. All right. That's because a couple of generations ago, dentists were just so um, inundated with cavities and toothaches and abscesses. Preventive Preventive dentistry has done a great job with the help of the hygienists. Um, we have done a, uh, we pretty much eradicated caries as a routine problem, right? right? Everybody knows now that when you find a cavity, it's an exception rather than the rule. Right. right? So now dentists have to say, okay, how else do I use my smarts and my talents? And what, what happened to me was that when I was in dental school, I, first of all, I was in college, um, two years after coming here from Taiwan. And my English was not that good. And I found myself in competition with, uh, with people who went to boarding school and they can whip out a paper overnight uh, and get an A. And I would read, um, uh, for a whole week with the dictionary under my arm and I would read 58 pages. So it was not a level playing field. And, but I did, you know, came out with an engineering degree because I could do the math and science. And I got to dental school, like one of the, all the mothers under the sun, she wanted me to be a doctor. And I thought, no way. <laughs> I couldn't read fast enough, right? And I didn't want to be telling people, okay, I need to amputate your leg or your mom just died and there's nothing wrong we can do. I didn't really enjoy that aspect. So when I pulled it out of bed upright and said, hey, how about dental school? There is some place I can handle with my level of English. So I thought. <laughs> but the engineering <laughs> background comes in handy, right? But the engineering background when I got to dental school kicked in and I, yeah. you know what I thought? I thought, what is this thing about teeth grinding? It does not make sense, right? So teeth are the hardest tissue we have in the human body, in the animal kingdom. Other than geology, I think we have the hardest substance on earth, right? Okay, so now, why would the body destroy the harder substance in the body, assuming that it's an asset to have teeth, right? So it was completely inexplicable to me. So it began a 30 plus year search and make that long third story very short. Um, I came to a conclusion after taking courses everywhere. I did craniosacral therapy. I did TMJ. I did nutrition. I did Chinese medicine. I did chirodontics. Um, I pretty much covered the whole th gamut, uh, natural medicine, and I didn't find the answer. Mm. Finally, I took some orthodontic training and there was a residency there from uh, Dr. Uh, Bailey, Dennis Bailey from UCLA, lecturer in Parkersburg. And he was the first one to say, ah, glad you're interested in bruxism. It is related to sleep. I said, what? And then from there, I met Dr. Singh, uh, the inventor of DNA appliance and the rest was history. And so the last piece of the puzzle was in place. So long story, one line answer. Teeth grinding is one frame in a movie. Right. The movie is called Airway Obstruction During Sleep. The movie is not called Dentistry. The, the movie is not called malocclusion. The movie is not anything dental. Teeth is just a road kill. Right. That's road an interesting kill. way. Okay, I haven't thought about it that way. Yeah. That's another thing. 
throughout your book, you have wonderful uh, analogies that are, are great to relate to patients. And it seems like your conversations just come to life that you've had with your patients. Is that true? Yeah. Is that? Yeah. yeah. We, we really enjoy having, you know, chair side chats. And so what happens is that uh, my office manager is always to say, hey, guy, move it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. But because we have so much fun. And so it got to the point where when I saw, for example, you talked about six foot tiger, three foot cage. I was trying to explain why, how and you know, why you need to redevelop the jaws and how that relates to the airway. And this didn't work, that didn't work until I came up with six foot tiger, three foot cage. And I saw the eyebrows went up in everybody's face. And I said, ah, there it is. <laughs> that right, was that's the, those are the wonderful analogies that you have that just stick, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then you go through the book, also your personal experiences, which I feel is really um, relatable and honest and uh, endearing. So it was really, um, I'm, I'm excited for everyone. As I know, it's like a tease because we don't have it out yet. But um, maybe you could kind of go come up with the GPS system. Um, I, I would love to quote you from your book, if I may. Sure. You say, um, you say, you are not only what you eat, but also how you eat, sleep, and live. Your mouth is the source of your energy and the gateway to your gut, brain, heart, and dental health. License to Thrive is your driver's training on how to own and operate uh, your mouth toward vibrant health naturally and away from obesity, diabetes, cancer, heart, or other killers, diseases proactively. So the big word there is proactively, right? We want to be ahead of this curve for sure. Right, right, right. So, you know, what is our public health telling us about this pandemic? How to deal with this pandemic, right? Everything is defensive, right? Everything is about washing your hands, keeping the distance, put the shield on, all right? So how can you be proactive in this pandemic, right? I love being a, the, in the dental profession because um, prevention and being proactive is built into our professional DNA. And I'm just simply saying that our kind of being um, proactive, our way of prevention is nothing that medicine knows. And it's something that they could basically take a page and learn from, all right? So I'm trying to apply what happens to oral hygiene to say, teeth, to say, gee, is there such a thing as systemic hygiene that we can apply to save hearts, brains, breasts, prostates, what have you, joints, okay, memory, all right? So the answer is yes. And the biggest part of systemic hygiene really comes through your mouth. So that's what this logo is about. Mm -hmm. Can you see the logo, okay? Yep. This logo basically shows the white as the, the um, um, digestive tract and the green as the respiratory tract, okay? And mm -hmm. L2P stands for license to thrive, okay? So um, the mouth mediates some of the most basic physiology in the body. First of all, is the mouth part of the head? Yes. <laughs> We forget this, okay? We're such two doctors that we we don't drill into the patient's head, pardon the pun, that, you know, where we work is part of your head, your skull. You could be minus any and all of your four limbs, but you cannot be minus this thing from above your head, above your neck, right? So we work in a crucially important part and we minimize our importance but remaining as what I call two doctors. This is a legacy of our dental training. It's part of the, it's part of the limitations built into uh, us and our practice by society with dental insurance being tied to these, you know, um, insurance codes. 
Right. That relates to dental procedures you do, right? And then the patient expectation. So we're boxed into this little corner that says T, okay? And the US Surgeon General back in 2000 issued a report called Oral Health America, in which it says a healthy mouth is much more than healthy teeth. Well, how's that for a profound statement? Right. And, and that was a while ago, right, Dr. Lea? Wasn't that, was that like 2000? 2000, 2000, yeah. 20 years that was, ago. Okay. That was their 2020 vision, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and here we picked, are. Yeah, nobody uh, has picked up the torch and ran with it. Well, you and, have. Uh, you have. Yeah, I think we are trying <laughs> to do that. Okay. So here's a, uh, let's just come back to this logo for a second. Um, part of how we grow as newborns, you know, in the first few minutes coming into this life is what? You get spanked in a fanny so that you go yell and big cry, right? That inflates the lung. And then to stop you from screaming, you know, a bottle or a nipple is put at your lips and you can suck for dear life, right? This is built into every one of us, okay? So through repeated cycles of sleeping and feeding, sleeping and feeding, we grow, gain strength, and eventually we can sit up, use our hands, put things in your mouth, and crawl, and stand up, and walk, okay? So this is how we grow. This is the human origin after birth, right? So the mouth is really to our entire human structure what the pyramid's base is. Only we grow from the top down. This is the important concept. This top down development never changes. So what happens when your maxilla is narrow? You have a high palatal fault because you grow up with stuffy nose and mouth breathing. All right, and so you get recurrent infections in the ears and tonsils. And you get lots of antibiotics just to put that behind you. Mm -hmm. Now your gut is wiped out with good flora. Now you wonder why later on you get so many allergies and food sensitivities and all of these diseases. Okay. So the origin, the origin of illness is here. All right. So we need to, as dentists uh, kind of broaden our viewfinder, right? So this is my job to kind of open up this tunnel vision. You go to a party, you meet someone new, what do your eyes do? You zero in on their smile, right? This is what we're conditioned to do. Well, Dr. Ben Moralia, Laura and I are trying to get people to open their viewfinders and you see the whole person, all right? You see their history from birth to now, medically, dentally, mentally, emotionally. And that includes their sleep habits and that includes their daytime symptoms, all right? We also look at a patient from on the scalp down to their feet. In my practice, the first thing I do when I listen to a new patient is literally listen. I put my ear next to the patient's corner of the mouth, and I say, inhale with your lips closed. I'm listening for nasal obstruction. Mm. Okay. So there's a whole new way to practice that allows us to really maximize our wheelhouse, which is the oral cavity, the content, okay, and the surrounding structures. Because if you get this part right, you clean up and straighten up this mouth. It's an exciting time to be a dentist. The patient will be thriving. Yes, yes. <laughs> and you can do this before the patient ends up in ICU or ER. And then with and your philosophy, the way you treat patients, I, I bet you had COVID-19, has this hit your practice hard? No, my practice is booming. I cut my practice down to half size. So I only see two patients a week. I mean, patients two days a week. And my my practice income basically doubled. 
Yeah. I mean, that's managed, a nice, so, that's oh, a nice oh, equation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and uh, the, the, I was also put it out there for you people. If you don't want to do more of the same hamster wheel routine, you can have 50 to 60% profitability doing this. And low stress, not having to bend over the patient for a living. And have patient come back and thank you rather than complain to you about right. what you did to them. Okay. You so, talk a lot about um, structure uh, and style. So yeah. we have a lot of control about our style. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, sure. Okay, so um, let me just go to my next slide. Sure. Uh, in case people want to get in touch with me, you know, we'll show this again at the end. But uh, you're welcome to reach out to me for whatever um, additional information. But this is the important part that, you know, if we're going to become mouth doctors, we need to understand that we're in charge of the gateway into the body. What a great place to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in fact, here we can literally turn somebody around in a proactive way. I have the greatest respect for you know, ICU um, professionals. I have the greatest respect for first responders, okay? They are, they are doing resuscitative medicine. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, I wrote this in my book. I, if I get hit by a car, I don't want homeopathy, I want the best trauma center, okay? It's not like I don't believe in it, but I would rather not have to have it. I would rather not have to go to ICU. So what do I have to do? Well, this is our wheelhouse now, okay? So actually the mouth, um, well, I define a holistic mouth as one that is structurally fit and sensibly used to support whole body health, okay? And so the mouth actually is a multitasking organ. I call it A, B, C, D, E, S. Alignment, breathing, circulation, digestion. What is that for? <laughs> Give you energy, all right? And of course, we're involved in sleep. So what happens when your mouth is not structurally fit and not sensibly used? Now you're in big trouble. And I call this impaired mouth syndrome. I'll show you what that is very shortly. But this is a big concept. If you have impaired mouth structure, you're gonna be prone to oxygen deficiency. And snoring and sleep apnea and teeth grinding are just manifestations of airway obstruction and oxygen deficiency, okay? So now you don't feel so good. And then if you have impaired mouth style, nobody ever showed you not only what to eat, but how to eat, right? If I can take you to a five star or 50 star organic buffet and you don't know how to eat, you still can kill yourself. All right, so how you eat is at least as important as what you eat. How fast, how much, when, and how much is enough, right? How much butter and syrup should you put on your pancake? You think it matters after a lifetime? to your arteries or your pancreas, right? And then when you don't get these two right, you end up with what we see everywhere, which is what? Inflammation. How do we see inflammation inside manifesting outside? Pot belly, double chin. We see this every day. Nobody does anything. I had a patient, dental patient, this is when I was still practicing dentistry, uh, in Rhode Island. I had a patient who had a radio talk show and he's always talking about nutrition, alternative medicine. And he said in my chair, I looked at him and he's got a pot belly like the size of a basketball. <laughs> I said, Fred, you, you harp on nutrition. How come you're sporting a pot belly? And he said, well, that's why I'm on radio. Nobody calls me up on it. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. Right, right, right. <laughs> All right. So sometimes patients are just 
like those kids, they're waiting for the parents to say something before they do something, right? Do the right thing. So it's our job to kind of, you know, take charge of the mouth, to help them take charge of their health and their medical dental destiny. And so like you say, Lauren, this is so exciting. I mean, I think I can just keep doing this for the next 30 years. And I mean, the fall of my, you know, a hell of a time. Okay. Well, you're certainly going to live a long, healthy life. That's for sure. I mean, you're saying that you actually lost six pounds doing, yeah. doing what you uh, were advising to do, but you weren't, you, you didn't seem overweight. So it's just, I, you look I, I don't mean, get, Dr. I never <laughs> felt deprived. I never felt deprived during that time. Okay. So we see, we see the results of impaired mouth syndrome all the time, okay? So I, I define a impaired mouth as a defective infrastructure, just like you have a lemon of a car for a road trip through life, right? You can still eat, drink, and talk. Like you can still drive a clunker and still get someplace, but the journey is not pleasant. Because why? This mouth cannot support A, B, C, D, E, S it will contribute to a low life quality, including many of these, mm -hmm. okay? So look at your patient's registration, uh, new patient registration form, see what they check off. They mean something to the patient. My intake interview consists of one question. What are your three wishes to the fairy godmother? <laughs> medical, dental, and mental, emotional. Symptoms you wish you didn't have to put up with day after day. I mean, I had a 14 year old boy this morning. He told me he had neck and shoulder pain, he had anxiety, he had low back. 14. Yeah. It had to be really bad because when you're growing, you don't feel pain. Okay. Bicuspid extraction, this is a man-made disaster, okay? Mm -hmm. These are people who suffer the most. Everybody who is in, who's a dentist has got patients like these and you can't help them, all right? They're dying, they're turning blue inside waiting for you. COVID-19 now doesn't mean the year 2019, it means 19 pounds gained <laughs> from Okay, people are stressed, what do they do? They eat, all right? So we are the ones in position to do this. All right, patients like this is everywhere, everywhere. You just have to stop looking at them, how do I say, lying down with their mouth open like in a hygiene chair. Right. They're saying no, ask them what you would like for fairy godmother to take away. Now, I'm not a fairy godmother. I'm just a fly on the wall, busy writing and see what I can help him with. Can I help him with this? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Can I help him with this? Absolutely. Can I help him with this? Absolutely. If I don't help him, let's put it this way. I have enough experience now, I can dare say this. If I don't lend a hand with what I know, he would never get completely well. Mm. He'll be a high risk COVID patient, okay? Once he goes into an ICU, odds are he'll not come out rather than he will come out, okay? So this is someone we really need to look after, right? And he actually came to my house, spent a week, and I showed him how to cook, how to eat, and I worked him up and we're actually doing the right thing for him. And he's on his way so that we can avoid this kind of thing. Okay, the ventilator is the last line therapy, right? You don't want to not have a fallback. So how do you keep the first domino standing strong in the first place? This is what we do, man. <laughs> I, That's why you're literally like on top of the world, right? Because yeah, this is yeah, what makes yeah. you want to go to work every day. Yes, this is this is this is where we have 
the Superman's cape and we wear, we wear the white uh, cowboy hat and we go and keep people out of trouble. And believe it or not, there's a huge market right now. COVID has really, really uh, made people hyper aware of the importance of this work, all right? If your mouth is structurally deficient, it's a lemon for your body. Then your digestion and your sleep and your oxygenation is impaired, all right? You're in a bad mood. You are looking for escape, you drink. Caffeine, alcohol, five-hour energy, whatever. And then you eat and you have runaway inflammation and diabetes. And down the hill, you not only go, but basically ski faster and faster and faster like a snowball. Right. So how do you turn somebody around? All right. People who live with this thing for a long time here. I want to just skip ahead. This is really where being a mouth doctor is a whole lot more than being a tooth doctor. All right. People who live with this kind of airway here for a long time, they're going to be in this situation. Every night they go to sleep, they're confronting death. So this picture was snapped by this wildlife photographer of the year for Linden Natural Museum, uh, Natural History Museum in 2019, okay? This was in Tibet, and uh, it was in February, I think. Um, this one just came out of its holes in the ground to look for some food, and then we got surprised by this mama, this uh, fox. This is moments before the marmot became lunch. <laughs> so can you imagine, can you imagine the adrenaline surge running through this marmot now? I mean, you can literally hear the scream here. And this is what happened to those patients with this kind of airway. Every night they go to sleep. Now you have one bad night's sleep, fine. The next day you don't feel so good, but maybe that night you will make it up, right? What happens if that happens night after night for decades, all right? So this is why I say we really need to understand how the body goes downhill to the point where they end up in ICU and still cannot recover, okay? So this is about stress hormone or cortisol levels on the vertical axis. Okay, there's an optimal amount that allows your body to respond to stress. As the stress goes up, like we go through dental school or like you start a family and suddenly you're juggling three careers within the same 24 hours, right? Well, you're able to respond if you start at a good place. But with time, with unrelating unrelenting stress, plus wrong eating, plus airway obstruction, now you start to decline. Your cortisol level peaks, and now it's not able to keep up. You start to drop, okay? So this is your optimal health level, and this is your health collapse, way right on the right end of your horizontal axis. We see a lot of sleep apnea patients either in this zone or this zone, okay? So cases have chronicity, severity, and complexity, all right? Someone who is going through graduate school, they're in their mid to late 20, they could stay up all night for several nights get the project behind them and then go on vacation and not miss a beat. Why? Because their cord is all their adrenals is still working. Two or three decades later, not. <laughs> Especially if they're obese and this airway problem was not diagnosed for them. Okay, this is a 27 year old lawyer, 29 year old lawyer, okay. 
And this is where she hurts. And she's got a beautiful set of teeth. And she's got the same way. And she's trying to start a family. So if we mom doctors don't recognize this, first of all, if she gets pregnant, her baby may not survive because of this. I've had three mothers who had this issue started and now they are happy. Uh, they have happy children after we fix this, okay? So what's important is that if you miss this, under your watch for a long time, and every night they confront death, they'll end up here or worse yet, here. All right, so to bring people back. So first of all, we need to recognize where is the patient? Is this easily fixable? Or is the tank is so empty that you need to fill the tank before they can find their way back up the hill? All right. So how are you gonna help them? Obviously you need oxygen, but never ever imagine that your oral plan is gonna fix someone who was way down here. Their thyroid is not working, their adrenal is not working. You may very well aggravate their condition. And these people are already very brittle, all right? So, Diagnosis, whole health diagnosis is super important. So it turns out that these people need to have their liver and gallbladder and adrenals and thyroid supported. They need their diet changed, okay? We're very big on bone building diet. And it's nothing fancy. This is my bachelor food. I buy turkey wings on sale for $3 a pair. <laughs> you can't get anything cheaper than that. You can't even get a burger that cheap. Okay. And the things you can do now with the uh, pressure cookers and the Instapots. Yeah, yeah. I plug this into my steamer and 20 minutes mm -hmm. later, I've got beautiful bone broth. Mm -hmm. And I like the kind of bone broth that you, you know, we just said Thanksgiving, right? So if you was to, if you were to make soup with that, you put that soup in the fridge. You know what happens when you take it out? It's like gelatin. That soup is not liquid. It's semi-solid. That, what makes that soup semi-solid is called gelatin. Gelatin and vitamin C makes precursors for bone. And what are we trying to do with our maxillar expanders for adults, okay? And so for vitamin C, I just recommend a green smoothie. Chocolate powder is optional. Here's arugula, here's tomato, and the bottom is celery and carrots half a banana for taste, you're good to go. And <laughs> this thing takes less than a minute, okay? And you can add coffee in the morning, you can add um, protein powder, you can add, um, 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 what do you call that? Um, medium chain uh, coconut oil. Okay. You know, the bulletproof coffee thing. You can do whatever you want to make it last long. Peanut butter, a black um, sesame paste, fine. And this stuff will actually reduce blood sugar. I mean, I drank this. Your, I'm sorry, Dr. Lab, but I just want to, you mentioned in your book that once the style has kicked in, you notice like old favorites become too sweet or too salty yeah. or just yeah. plain yeah. too much. So yeah. how, how long would that take a patient about to, to adjust to that? New, new healthy lifestyle and not miss okay. the sleep. Okay, so I can only speak from personal experience. I, I had been a kind of a low grade pastry holic. I like a cup of coffee, uh, a cup of black coffee and have some pastry to go with it. I'm not particularly picky uh, in the old days. Now I am very conscious and not picky in the sense that, you know, I look down upon this versus that, or that, that is nutritionally bad for me. I'm talking about a fundamental change in your taste bud. All right, like, so for some of us, you can get us to eat uh, fast food for three meals in a row. 
right? right? I mean, that's just a change in your taste buds, right? Well, I've gotten to the point where when I see fancy pastry, I just say, nice work, but I don't have that desire for it anymore. Mm. I walk by, um, I walk by a chocolatier. I don't have to have my, um, um, the, what is that called? Used to be called the almond bark. Okay. <laughs> I don't have to have that anymore. Okay, so the 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 hook, the addictive hook of sugar starts to lose its grip on you. Okay, so it's hard to say, but I would say give it about three to six months. Mm -hmm. All right, because what happens is that this ingredient here will reconstitute your 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 receptors. It will reconstitute, renew your um, uh, cells in such a way that you're not so sugar driven. Of course, it helps if you don't have, you know, eating sweets uh, or drinking alcohol as your escape hatch from stress. Right? I mean. You know, in the pinch, we always have, we all have our go-to and coffee is certainly universally accepted, right? But if you do enough of this bone building diet, you will naturally lose that craving for sweets. The worst craving I get now is I want some potato chips to go with this. Just to have some, <laughs> right? So I'm no saint yet. But I'll tell you that um, uh, I wish I learned this thing 30 years ago because I could be double Superman now. <laughs> so we know, Dr. Liao, it takes a team. Um, how, are you, yeah. how do you collaborate? Did you build a team of like-minded healthcare professional, professionals in your area? Yes, yes. Uh, I will tell you that it's going to depend on the talent in your area. But the most important talent is going to be you. The mouth doctor, okay? It's gonna be you, the holistic mouth consultant. We have a program for hygienists. We have a program for assistants, for airway coordinators. So that they are recognized to be an integrated mouth consultant. And you see clues of people uh, from the outside. You talk to them, you can figure out what their inside is like. And you do two cases with a mouth doctor. Uh, on redeveloping their airway, and they get better. Okay, and I want to just kind of give a give a quick uh, uh, shout out to Lauren and Ben's work, well, specifically you. for children. Okay, pediatric obstructive sleep apnea. Now these kids have no teeth. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> they have no teeth. There. How come they have sleep apnea? Okay, that's a really good area. A good question to ask. Right. So you know obese children is a disorder of oral facial growth. Now, doesn't that put the ball squarely in our court? If we're not in charge with our on, on proper oral facial growth, then who should be? All right. So learn. Learn from. Lawrence group, fine work, you know, re recognize these signs, educate the mother. Look, you shouldn't be putting chapstick on your kids because he's mouth breathing all the time because he's got fish gills for nostrils. And this has everything to do with what you feed him. The two eyes are not even, all right? He would have temper tantrums or he would have moodiness Okay, so he cannot be too comfortable in his body. Kids who suck their thumb, they're trying to do cranial therapy on themselves. They're trying to relieve their sutural strain. All right, so catch them early. Don't wait until the stage. I mean, this girl went to some dental checkup for five years before she came to see me. <laughs> Oh, no cavity, but you know what? <laughs> we missed the rest of the person, okay? So it's this, and now we have cone beam CT. We can see their sinus. We can see how stuffy their nose is, okay? We provide trainings on how to recognize this is the case 
before we even do a CT scan, the nasal valve here will collapse, okay? And you'll be able to pick that up. And the patient is gonna say, God, I'm not coming to another dentist, I'm coming to a mouth doctor, and you breathe. And when someone has this kind of nasal obstruction, they will be moody, they'll be achy, they'll be tense, they'll be anxious, and they won't feel like it, whatever that it may be, all right? Party, relationships, good time, fine company, forget it, okay? So, adenotonsillectomy, is that an answer? No. Here's a study. It's in the book, so you don't have to write this down. But five years later, in a five-year follow-up, 27% of the adenotonsillectomy patient had complete resolution of sleep apnea syndrome. <laughs> so that's not where it's at because 72% of the time it didn't work. So tonsils is a roadkill. Again, just like teeth grinding, okay? Tonsils is not the cause. Standard American diet is. So, Look at this girl. This is, this, this is her adenoid. We have this technology now. So learn how to think like a real doctor and figure out what's wrong where and how much to help these patients. All right? And the easiest thing I can tell you is start a conversation. Use this thing that I devised called the impaired mouse syndrome score. Give it to every one of your patients and you'll realize that you, your patients are turning blue just waiting for you to get this, okay? So on the left side, it is your um, um, malocclusion, typical signs of malocclusion, okay? We're so fixated on cosmetic dentistry now that we forget what malocclusion does to the rest of the body. And that's all I did was I looked it up I put down some of the more common signs and consequences of malocclusion on the left side. On the right side is sleep apnea, mm -hmm. okay? So it's airway, mouth structure. So I call it impaired mouth syndrome score. Now, the more ones, now this is like no, yes, no, right. yes. The more yeses that they have, um, the worse the need. But they could only have one. For example, medically diagnosed sleep apnea from a test. You can have a score of one and that will qualify you as having impaired mouth syndrome score, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not important how big or how low the score is. It's just more important that you start a conversation on the oral contribution to these symptoms. And there are 32 of them here. And every practice has got patients full of these. So let's just take teeth grinding, for example. Let's just take crowded lower interior teeth, okay? Let's just see, you know, somebody, you look at them from the side, the profile view, and they have weak upper lips, all right? The lip that's curled inward, it means that the maxilla is not sufficiently forward developed during childhood. So children's face is different from an adult's face because the children's face is not Grown forward from the base. Mm -hmm. The base of the maxilla is at the hemilo notch. And when you breathe through your nose and you eat standard American diet and you have tongue tie, you end up growing part way forward instead of all the way forward. And that's how you end up with this look. All right. So whenever you see somebody's lip drop straight down, I can guarantee you they have deficient jaw development and they would have airway problem. And you eat the wrong diet here, the kid is toast. Yeah. So That's not what, what we would say chair side though, right? That's what <laughs> I mean? We don't say that chair side. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, by the time the, 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 the kid comes to us, you know, like the, the morning of the consult in this case, Mom came in without the kid. I said, what happened? She said, well, 
She had a headache this morning. I said, what did she have for dinner last night? Pasta. So in my book, I wrote a whole chapter on not pasta, but glyphosate, toxins poisoning Mother Earth and your children. So glyphosate is sprayed on most of the wheat growing in the United States. And the part that didn't get sprayed, they get in pollinated because of the wind, okay? So wheat is in everything and glyphosate is in all the breakfast cereals, mm -hmm. according to environmental work group, okay? So it is widespread prevalent, okay? You have to find a way to coach people on how to eat correctly so they don't get stuffy nose, they don't have tonsillar enlargements, they don't just rely on adenotonsillectomy for solutions, all right? This is where we grow from and whether we thrive or we crash just depends on this. So depends on how far down the hill the patient goes, you may need to have all these tools in your toolbox, in your knowledge base before you want to start a case because it could be hazardous to your practice. You know, some of these patients who are very far down the hill, um, like I showed you on this, um, this um, adrenal decline slide. If you don't have adrenals, you cannot mobilize your body to fight an immunological warfare against viral infections or cancer, right? If you don't have adrenals, you don't recover from anything. All right, so this is the sympathetic nervous system. You need to be able to mobilize your psychoneuroendocrine immunology. Remember that big word? <laughs> yeah, okay. So even at rest, you need your sympathetic nervous system to empower your uh, immune system to mount a fight, okay? So you need to know how to assess where the patient is, and then you need to know how to put together this thing. So back to that very good question you asked, Lauren, uh, how to build a team. I will tell you that the most important member of the team is you, the mouth doctor quarterback, okay? The mouth doctor is simultaneously the general contractor for the entire cranial facial region and the uh, most important uh, uh, play caller. When do you call in the ENT? Well, not for adenotonsillectomy, before you try a bunch of other things, non-surgical, non-medicational, which is one, diet change, and two, I like to send my patient to an acupuncturist, all right? Um, a lot of people don't want more of the same. A lot of my patients come to me having done their intense research. <laughs> I mean, I'm really impressed by some of them. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, I, they don't want drugs, okay? So I looked at them and I said, you know, if this was my kid, I would want to do it this way. The kid didn't come with ADHD, so I'm not going to put them on Ritalin, right? I mean, if the kid was born with issues, uh, I would want to say, okay, what else besides breast milk and uh, airway can help? The answer is everybody gets better when you give them the right care. Give the body what it needs and it will thrive. And how do you thrive? You start from good sleep with open airway and good nutrition, bar none. <laughs> and why go to ICU to get it? I keep saying that, right? Doing your own bed, doing your own kitchen. What's so great about all your work, Dr. Liao, is that you it's inviting. It's not intimidating. I know we're talking about a lot of heavy topics and kind of some doom and gloom here and there, but you're really holding um, patients and people accountable in a good way because you have control of this. So oh, this, your quote, like is, building health is an inside job, just like yeah. happiness, right? Yeah, so, no, 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 this is true. This is an inside job. You, you know, I, I don't know about any one of you, but I don't want to hand my 
lungs, my prostate, or my brain case to any surgeon. Mm -hmm. All right, I would rather take care of it, be the gardener, and take care of my turf, okay? And so what we look for is oral contribution to all these symptoms here, all right? And can we help snoring? Yes, can we help obesity? You bet, if we don't take the time to care, okay? The most important part for this person is not his amalgam filling. I'm sorry. I have been a biological dentist. Uh, there was a time in my career when, oh, you gotta take care of this first before your body can respond. True, in an optimal way, in the absence of a fire to put out. There are many more fires that are much more urgent than an amalgam replacement. Okay. So, right growing pain, Okay, so back to this teamwork thing that we were talking about. I refer to my acupuncturist. She told him how to eat, how to massage his ileocecal valve, and what not to do, like eat an oversized dinner before you go to bed. And guess what? He left without his hip pain. Huh. Yeah, okay. Huh. So that was part of the reason. So. Acupuncturist could, could be a really amazing resource. Get to know one by just becoming their patient. Um, you know, be on, get on their table and let's say, do me. <laughs> See what you can do for my pain, for my stuffy nose, for my snoring, for whatever, okay? Uh, my depression, my anxiety, my moodiness, my low energy, okay? So, um, that for many of my patients, so you have to know your patient type, right? Some people are insurance, some practice are very insurance driven. So you might have to go with medical offices that take insurance, right? Well, the patient come to me, they're you know, yoga practitioner, they've tweaked their diet to the nth degree. They don't want more of the same. They don't want to be sent for more thyroid testing. They've exhausted all of that, okay? so. For me, um, um, thyroid is uh, uh, one of the most frequent needs. So you need to look for a good functional medicine partner. You need a good craniosacral therapist, an osteopathic doctor who does manipulations on the cranium, on the, um, on the uh, um, craniosacral sac, uh, the, the Beningi system, they're, they're worth their weight in gold. All right. you, if you're lucky enough, hire one into your office and pay them a king's ransom. You know, that's how important that is. Um, I think beyond that, uh, uh, you being the quarterback of this mouth, teaching them how to eat, um, showing them this. By the way, uh, I wanted to show you a quick study. This is a French um, study that came out in May, okay? Very early on in the pandemic. They used a BMI of 28.4. That's very low, okay? Um, most of the Americans, they have BMIs way, way up there, okay? So you know where 28.4 is? It's right here. Most Americans, don't look like this. They're either like this or they're like this, okay? So even at that, here's the outcome. So the, the, the outcome is either you get intubated or you die, okay? That's the kind of outcome that they're measuring against. So what are the greatest risk factors? People who are already treated with obstructive sleep apnea. <laughs> That's the highest odds ratio of ending up with death or intubation as a primary outcome. Okay, why? Because these people are already way down the hill on their adrenal decline. Okay. The next one is heart disease, which we all know about. The next one is age. And age is related to what? Adrenal decline, right? Mm -hmm. What's retinol? Retinol is eye, microcirculation, diabetes, right? 
kidney, diabetes, kidney, adrenals, okay? So there is no doubt in my mind that the most important part of the team is the mouth doctor who understands this whole thing. All right, so you become the most pivotal player, whether you are acting as an integrated mouth consultant or a holistic mouth doctor or airway center mouth doctor. You just need to take charge of this thing so that your patient gets the benefit of this. Absolutely. That's the reason why I wrote this. And so the question then becomes, okay, for the younger people, how do you reverse them early on? For the sicker people who are further down the hill, how do you bring it back? What is the knowledge base uh, that the dentist need? You know, there's a, what I found in my training of AMDs is that dentists are very good at fixing teeth, but they lack that kind of knowledge. There's a huge knowledge gap for them to become system thinkers, like physiology, like anatomy, like fascia, like how does the mouth connect to the low back pain, right? How does the uh, mouth, how does mouth occlusion relate to knee pain, okay? Um, foot collapse, like pronation of the feet, we have something to do with that, okay? But we're not very good system thinkers, and so, um, that's why I put this out in part to become a resource for dentists who are interested to become airway center mouth doctors and in part to let the patient public understand that, oh, there's a new breed of doctors called AMDs who are able to connect these dots for me. Everybody's got- There's certainly not of enough of them, Dr. Liao. <laughs> Just like you, yeah. I'm constantly getting instant messages, DMs from patients of where can they go to have airway-centered yeah. dentists. Yeah. So there's definitely a shortage. So that's yeah. why we're here, right? To help uh, with that deficit. And between and your programs, Dr. Moralia's programs, other yeah. programs, we, we're yeah. open to all the programs. As many yeah. tools as yeah. you yeah. have in your toolbox, the better. <laughs> There, there are way, way, way more need and way too few suppliers of this need. Yeah. So Dr. Liao, if it's okay with you, I am just going to go ahead and um, give some announcements because I know we're, we're past yeah. time, but um, sure, the sure. good news is that we, we learned so much from you and as we could spend 12 hours talking about <laughs> I am sure. Uh, don't it's, have a joy. it's a joy, it's a joy to share. Uh, we don't have questions because I think you did such a nice job of just explaining it and your stories and, and the visuals. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump to just some um, just kind of announcements. There's some exciting things coming up that I want to share. Sure, sure. And let me just go and do that. So bear with me, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think um, Dr. Steve Carsonson is on with us. Um, I just wanted to share. Can you see my screen with the ADA slide? No, Lauren, all we see is the, um, the conversation for Dr. Laos. Okay, hey. is that Dr. Carsonson? <laughs> I'm here. Oh, terrific, let me, you know, I just got fancy today and got a second monitor and uh, obviously it's not, working for me quite well. So let me just see if I can slide through here manually. There How's is. that one? There we go. Excellent. Yeah. So um, Dr. Carson said, why, since you're on the line, I'm so glad. Why don't you tell us about this exciting uh, opportunity coming up soon, right? It's December 10th and 11th. Can you, can you are you on mute? Well, I'll go ahead and, and share right. the Okay, there we go. Yeah, it, it quit on me just as I needed it to not be. Of not course, that's the Zoom demon. <laughs> um, so yes, the, I'm so proud of the American Dental Association for supporting the children's airway uh, events. We've had, uh, this is our third meeting that we're gonna have as a CE event. So we get a chance to introduce people to the kind of learning that they have to go on and learn a lot more about. 
but uh, we have uh, excellent uh, speakers this year. On Thursday evening, Lauren Ballinger, who's a pediatric dentist from Washington, uh, from Massachusetts, who only does airway in her practice as a pediatric dentist, is going to talk about her journey and why she does it that way. Susan Maples, a general dentist from Michigan, is uh, has an entire program about getting kids healthy. It's not just about their teeth. It's a little bit about their teeth, of course, but it's a lot about airway. It's a lot about nutrition. It's a lot about brushing and all the things that we can do. Howard Stupak is an otolaryngologist who uh, wrote a book about surgery, but spent the first two thirds of the book talking about growth and development of kids. And so I've talked with him and he's a, a, a fantastic, excited about this. He's new to kind of this area for us, but his message is, is great. And then uh, uh, Becca Bacow is a world-class orthodontist. I'm happy to say works here in Bellevue, Washington. And uh, she knows more than anybody needs to know about growth and development and paying attention to airway in kids. So right along the lines with what uh, Dr. Felix's great message was tonight, come and listen to these experts. We're going to have worksheets. We're going to have Q&As. We're going to have a discussion time. So it's not just lectures. And you go away from that thinking, wow, I know a little bit more. And I got and I got a plan for learning a lot more. And then, how do people register? Is it www.ada.org? Just That's go ahead. Type in ada.org ce live, just like it says Perfect. there on the screen, and it, and they, it'll take them right to it. Well, I thank you um, for thank you for, for the opportunity to put this on, Lauren. For sure, <laughs> and I'm so glad that we can raise awareness. Um, and I'm also so excited because you'll be joining us for our upcoming um, airway chats. So yeah. uh, Dr. Liao, I'd love to have you back in 2021 because I feel like we only got the tip of the iceberg tonight. <laughs> so you're always <laughs> welcome. Um, but I, I do want to share that since Dr. Um, Carsonson, you're with us, that you're going to be with us in January 20th um, to give us all the updates on the ADA and uh, children's airway health. So we look forward to that. So yep. thank you. So yeah, I got to say, I'm not going to talk about like policies and stuff like this. I'm going to talk about why it's important for our organizations. And then I'll know a little bit more by then, too. We got some cool stuff coming up. Excellent. Well, we look forward to that to kick off the year. Um, I'm going to be having a, a patient, actually, from a patient's perspective. You might have heard of Ireland Bonds. She did a wonderful YouTube video on why malocclusion is not genetic. She took it upon herself to do really, really great, uh, intense um, uh, research. So I, I highly encourage you to Google her or look at that YouTube, but she's just going to share with us her story of um, uh, extraction, retraction, orthodontics from a patient's perspective. Uh, we're going to have Dr. Ben Moralia, our regular here. Uh, we're going to talk about the benefits of expansion as it relates to TMD symptoms. And then um, Dr. Gerald Simmons will be joining us uh, and we'll talk all about bruxism and uh, grinding and the correlation to airway. And then Dr. Siegel's gonna return uh, again to talk about infants, pediatrics, um, TOTS uh, in that age category. We had him on uh, last month for the adults version. So exciting things happening uh, with Airway Health Solutions. We're really happy to spread the word and raise awareness to airway health and, and collaborative care for sure. Um, thank you so much for doing such a great job, Lauren. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, you so much. So we do have um, a demand for airway dentists. We um, are partners really with Dr. Liao. You know, we're all kind of one big happy family in the airway rabbit hole because it's not the end all to go to one course. You know, we, we offer um, the pediatric uh, mini residency with Dr. Moralia and the adult version. And for anyone who has taken our course already, we truly believe that Dr. Liao's course is a great uh, follow-up course, but it doesn't really matter what order you take it in, um, but to get different perspectives, learn different things, have different tools in your toolbox. It's not like one and done, as many of you know who are on this call, who you are already on this airway uh, journey. So the more you know, the better. And many times they reinforce concepts and make it clearer so then you can translate that to your patients um, even more effectively. So we're also on social media. Um, I try to uh, post things that can be helpful for patient communications as well as research and thought leaders. So look for us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, all of our airway chats, I call them, uh, our conversations are uploaded to YouTube. So if you missed it or wanted to share uh, for lunch and learn with your team, be sure to visit us there. And then I'm also going through expansion myself. I don't know, Dr. Liao, have you noticed if I'm wider yet? 
<laughs> oh yeah, no, I told you uh, when you first came on, you looked more beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> That's what this work does. It brings out a better version of everybody. Well, it's the bone broth and it's, it's the expansion. That's you what betcha. it is. You betcha. You betcha. Thank you. Um, and then Dr. Liao uh, will send up some follow-up information, but he he's also very accessible on social media. So you may just want to take a screenshot of this, but I will send a follow-up email to everyone as well. I know we're over time, um, but I just wanted to get all of this in so you had resources um, to go to. And then lastly, let me go down here. Okay, there's the contact information. Um, feel free to reach out. I can be the gatekeeper and help you uh, get in touch with Dr. Liao if you need to, um, as well as any information for our upcoming mini residencies or airway chats. So I think it is a wrap. I'm going to stop the share so we can um, can see each other a little bit bigger, not a little little box in the corner. Dr. Liao, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing your wisdom, your knowledge. The book, I can't wait for it to come out to um, so patients can really have a license to thrive and understand the whole body connection, airway, nutrition, the um, being in the driver's seat, as you say, to really take control. And I love for the doctors to be the quarterbacks, um, male and female quarterbacks, <laughs> if you would. So. All right. It all starts here. It all starts here, okay? It's where life is. Everything else just detail. Well, I thank you again. Uh, any last words you want to say, Dr. Leo? No, uh, the book um, will be available in January and um, you can get a, get on the VIP notice list uh, through Lawrence uh, because you've already registered with this event. Absolutely. So whoever, I have your email because you registered already, you'll be on the pre-published list, the VIP list, and we'll make sure that you're aware when License to Thrive is published, which we can't wait. So thank you everyone for your attention. Thanks again, Dr. Liao. Dr. Carstensen, if you're still with us, thanks for jumping on. I wish you a successful event. And happy holidays, everyone. This is the last one of the year. So we'll see you next year with a great lineup. Have a good night. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you.